So, hi and welcome to this new session, again a session about uh, AEX 2012 R3 um, and again about the employee self-services. So last time I just showed you how you can um, do kind of internal um, internal um, purchase requisitions. Actually where you can just purchase kind of uh, products and this time I'm actually going to try to set up the expenses. So uh, for those who don't know my kind of videos I'm always starting actually with a blank system and try to set the whole thing up and yeah honestly I have also no clue about the, um, all the things I'm doing. I'm just trying in the end. So yeah so this means this time uh, the expenses about expense. So of course um, we need to do some setup so let's just go to AX. So yeah, there is a module <laughs> for travel and expenses and uh, different to the three earlier versions of AX, you have actually no possibilities in here to kind of create um, expense reports. It is really just possible over um, the employee self-service, so over the uh, enterprise portal or, or especially over SharePoint in the end. So yeah, uh, I I've never set this up. I have no clue uh, about the things, but we will just go through it. And it's basically every setup is more or less the same. In the end, um, we just want to ensure that it is working and all the other things you just have to test. But in the end, of course, the most important thing is that um, the basic setup is done, that it is um, at least a little bit working. Good. So, um, yeah, I've just opened the parameters. As always, we start at the parameters and well, okay. So the standard rate of mileage, let's just say um, 0 0.7 euros in this case, because the mandate is in euros. Um, here, personal expenses, well, the expenses charged on the credit card, well, is paid by the company. Display entire expense report and drill back sounds good. No, I don't want to have a travel um, authorization. Um, Edit allow edit distribution before posting means nothing else that the um, that the user is able to say well how should it be distributed to which main accounts and so on. Um, the policies should be yeah they should be online and not for the whole report that's fine. Always show sounds also good no no intercompany uh, no credit card expense category lookup looks sounds good financial. Okay, in the financial, I need to have a ledger journal. So I just go in here and create one expenses. Expenses. I guess there is no specific. No, I use the journal type daily then. Good. And well, what else? The voucher series, of course. I'm just saying here a new one. Um, EXP. X Expenses, expenses, scope parameter, company, and I mean the company, the EMF. Um, I don't want to have this, I want to have a constant, which is EXP. Six digits should be enough. I know this. Okay, um, not continuous. And starting by 100,000 and save and EXP because it is not, con okay, it needs to be continuous. So I'm just searching again for this voucher series and tick the continuous button and now it should be possible to add it. Good, okay, I add here this journal, enable tax recovery, no post cash advances immediately, allow tax, tax sounds fine, okay. Corporate credit card, I'm not going to set this up. Um, per diem, I think there is normal rounding. Uh, there is also another possibility to set this up. Fax cover pages, also not needed. <laughs> Good. Um, okay, let's move on with the, not yet the workflow. Let's go to travel and expense entries, I would say. Okay, so let's go for the payment methods at first. So let's say we have the payment method cash, cash, uh, expense over owner. Um, I guess I need to put in here the employee, I guess. Um, offset account, so where it should be posted. Um, 
I don't think that I'm going to use the worker. I think I'm going to create the vendor. Also basically, I'm going to create the employee as a vendor. Therefore, I just need to quickly go and create a vendor account. So I click Control and N, uh, vendor account, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, myself, group. Yeah, normally you would have here also a vendor group, which is called 60 M employees terms of payment net one day net one day good okay so 60 um, address doesn't matter um, all the other stuff all the other stuff I guess also doesn't matter otherwise we would see it later on so I say in here off the count one two three four five six seven Good. I would have also, let's say, CC for credit card. Um, yeah, let's say this time it is the company who is the expense owner and the, or the offset account is, for example, directly the bank. So it is automatically, automatically reduced on the bank account. Good. So those two payment methods should be fine. Okay. Uh, Categories, so the expense categories, as you can see here, this is a shared table as well. So you see all the categories from all the different mandates. I just say, I just create here, for example, one category for meal, meal category. It is used. Yeah, okay. Um, meal one, okay, or my meal my underscore meal okay and well i need to tick here this one here that it is possible to use in expenses um i have here the expense type those are quite important so i choose here of course the expense type meals i'm not using kind of a subcategory but i'm going to create a second one my underscore hotel hotel can be used in expenses, expense type, hotel. And I don't know where this is coming from. Um, I guess it is also coming from uh, somewhere, some any kind of setup from another mandate because in this mandate in here, there is no, uh, no setup at all actually. So yeah, but it's not necessary actually to use subcategory as far as I guess. Good, so those were the shared categories. Now I'm going to create the expense categories for this specific mandate. So in this case for the EMF, I click Control and N. I'm choosing here my hotel category cost, yeah, hotel. Um, default payment method is, let's say, credit card. Itemization mandatory, uh, no clue, <laughs> no clue at all, but yeah. Okay, item sales tax group, let's use here full rate. So um, depending, yeah, let's use here the full rate for the hotel. Uh, it is then also you know, based on the sales tax group and sales tax group can be set it up by country, for example. So main account, um, of course, I need to have kind of a cost account. Let's see if there is such yeah, hotel expenses. So perfect. So I've chosen the main account. Good. Um, as you can see, I can say, well, okay, which one, which payment methods are allowed? So I could remove it or I can leave it in. And that's already fine. Um, next one, my underscore meal, meal and default payment method. Let's say this one is normally paid cash funny but this time it is not ticked in the other one it was ticked okay and let's see if i have here somewhere meal employee meals yeah perfect i'm also choosing here this the item sales tax group full statistic group i'm not going to use that good i save it and then those are in here the same way as before perfect good so we have the expense categories um delegates 
no, I'm not going to set up this uh, display fields uh, is uh, in which one are shown in the enterprise portal. So you can actually say, okay, what should be shown? Should it be show or does it, is it possible to um, adjust the value? Then you can choose display. If it should not be shown, then you can say do not. They do not display read only means well read only um, well to just have a look how it looks like I just say here display all fields and for the transaction fields I'm doing it as well then I can remove it later on as well and I see that I not going to use it okay we are at the policies so um, um yep okay I'm just going to set up here kind of kind of expense report policies um, this means nothing else than, for example, you don't want to have kind of an employee who is creating kind of um, something which is with which is a higher amount than the policy. Then you can add here such kind of a policy. Um, I always see it. I'm just going to create a new policy and I say um, meal pol. So meal policy, just as an example. I'm choosing here the man date which is um i guess the german one germany yes okay going to choose this one and now i can say well okay i do want to create a policy for my meals so as you can remember we've created before in the expense categories um we've we've actually put the meal to the meals expense type. So this means nothing else than um, I'm going to create now in here a policy for all the expense categories which are which are of the expense type meals. So this means nothing else than I can say I want to create for this one a new rule. It is for then that's fine and I can add here a new a new condition. So the expense line amount is, for example, bigger than um, 200, 200 euros, 200 euros, and okay. So if this amount is bigger, then um, do the following. Allow user to submit, do not allow user to submit or approve and display error message. Yep. So that's basically the possibilities that you have. And I just say, for example, this one. And in here I can say that I want to add kind of a text. For example, we don't want our employees to get or to become, to become fat there for it is not allowed to have meal costs which are higher than 200 euros good save it close it and okay and we've added this kind of policy i think in the parameters yeah you always need to ensure that um here in the parameters that the policy rule parameters that the companies are here on the right side um nothing else should be yeah, needed in here good perfect close and close travel requisitions definitely not the per diem so the daily rate you get so for example at first you need to create the location so for example if the location is in um Germany, so we have two locations, Germany and Switzerland. And then we can say in the per diems, for example, at the location, Germany, currency, euro, valid from day to date. Um, so if someone is going out to Germany, he get um, a fixed amount of, let's say, 50 euros for a hotel for the meals let's say um 15 euros and some other kind of expenses fixed expenses he get of let's say 30. Um, if someone is going to switzerland um currency let's say also euro even if we have um, swiss francs um the hotel cost yeah you know switzerland is really really expensive so 250 euros for the hotel for the meal 60 euros and some other expenses um, if someone is in switzerland and someone want to have something let's say 800 euros that you just get for, as an expenses because switzerland is really expensive good so um credit card i'm not going to set up the credit cards this 
compute recent codes as well, not text configurations. Yep, okay, I'm going to need to set up this. So therefore, the mandate is in Germany. Unfortunately, there is not a Swiss one. Um, so therefore, I'm just going to say in here, the country region code um, Germany um, is, of course, the, the accounts payable domestic. And if someone is going to Switzerland, then it is um, accounts payable third party since Switzerland is fortunately not in the European Union. Good. Okay. Um, cash advance, cash advance account. So I guess, okay, this is just if, uh, as I guess, if an employee is, if you give the employee the cash in advance and he is going to travel, um, <clears throat> and it's using the amount that you gave him then you can could set up in here um, such kind of postings but um, i'm not going to do that okay um, statistics i'm also not going to use any kind of statistics groups and travel locations and so just kind of kind of um, additional information good um, Let's just quickly have a look again in here at these kind. Okay, the, the account is here. Let's go back to per diems once again, per diem rate tires. Okay, there's also the possibility to say, well, okay, you need to work, for example, at least six, six hours. Otherwise, you don't get it. And first day, last day, both and so on. But I'm not going to set up this. Did I forgot something? Delegates not needed. Was it already? Was it? Mm -hmm. I have the ex. I guess so. I guess so. So we have in the expense categories, we have the things, we have in the payment methods the vendors. But of course, I've created a new vendor group. I just quickly need to set up also the posting rules for the employees. Otherwise, we would run into an error. So in the vendor posting profiles, in the general posting profiles, ah, okay, it is already set up. Good. So, um, yeah, this means the last point would be the the expense workflow because, uh, as I've seen, more or less everything that is going through the through the um, employee self service is need to have needs to have kind of workflows. Therefore, um, I'm just going to create here a new one. Um, as far as I've seen, you have to create those two. So you have to create one for expense report, um, auto posting and one for uh, the expense report itself. So let's just create at first the one for the expense report. And as you can see here, also, there are already some available, which is just because it is a shared table. Um, so yeah. Good. I'm not going to explain the, the workflow. You would have the possibility to add kind of conditional decisions um, or manual decisions or whatever. But uh, since this is not a workshop about workflows, um, but about the expenses, um, I'm just going to create here quite a simple one just by saying, well, when the workflow starts. So as soon as an expense report is submitted, sorry then it is it needs to be approved and yeah needs to be approved here that's fine that's fine and if i double click on it and go to step one and basic settings i can say please approve <clears throat> please approve please approve assignment well, uh, you can say you can assign it to the workflow user. Um, you must enter a text. Okay, I'm going to do it later on. Or just to a user. I'm just going to use a user and admin in this case. So I'm just going to say I'm able to do it. So therefore, it's fine. A single approver. So just me. And good. Um, basic settings. Test. Okay. Good conditions always run this step so this is fine close go a level higher and well let's activate it uh, sorry totally wrong save a close and my version and on okay and yes i want to activate it 
and now AX is going to activate this workflow. Um, I guess it was this one here. Yes, it should be. So since there are already kind of versions from other mandates available, I just set my as a default. So it is it will run my one here. Good. So as I said, we need to create also the second one for the report auto posting. I create the workflow and in here again, conditional decisions, which you can add, or if you want to make it simple, you can just say start auto post the expense report and actually in here i think you don't need to say anything basic settings yep so you can just directly save and close and my version very some version and okay and activate and okay good and this one is my so i also set this one as default perfect um, so first of all so what you need to ensure is that of course your user so for example my user or myself needs to be employed of course so um, first of all you need to be employed in the correct mandate so for example uh, since i'm working in demf um, you have to ensure that um, your worker is your worker that you have or the worker that you create is um uh, is um employed in the correct mandate so otherwise you will run into an error so in this case contoso enter entertainment system germany which is fine and of course as well you have to make the connection between your system user and you and the worker itself so in system administration and user you need to search for the user you're working with so in my case admin and on the relations as you can see i don't have yet um, done it. Mm, strange. Anyhow, so user C admin, not C admin. Okay, sorry, admin. Yeah, okay. Uh, and on the relations, uh, you need to ensure that um, it is connected to the worker. So just by clicking on new, then you can search here for the person that you've created. And this person that you search needs to be employed in the correct mandate. So it's quite simple. Okay. Good. Um, next thing you need to ensure is that the batch jobs for the workflows are running because as you saw before we created a uh, kind of workflows and those needs to be um, they need to they need to run so therefore uh, you can actually check here under inquiries system administration inquiries batch jobs batch jobs if it is running so in this case yeah, as you can see here, the workflow message processing is waiting. Um, so this means it will run soon. So under the batch job history, I should see that uh, it, yeah, it is running all the time. So this is fine. If you don't know how to create it, uh, in my last video, um, I've actually showed it how to how to set it up. So how to set up this um, the this batch job? You actually just need to add those three those three tasks uh, in it, add a recurrence and start it, also put the status to waiting and then it should work. As I said, um, on my playlist, you will find the last video of the um, internal purchasing of internal purchase requisitions where uh, I've set it up actually. Good. So this means now the setup is, I guess, already done. Um, so the basic setup, let's see if, if it is working or not. I just quickly close here the employee self-service and just reopen it again. Good. And ensure that you are here in the correct mandate. So I'm in them. And now I should hopefully be able to say in here that I want to create a new expense report. Select and the on expense that you want to add to this expense report and then click to continue. Uh, okay. Continue. <laughs> what is happening now? As I said, I've never, I've never worked with that, but yeah. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, um, expense purpose, let's say 
uh, February 2016 or expenses February 2016 location Switzerland attachments no blah 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 show more fields let's see what we see okay uh, as you saw before um, all the things that I said display um, all these things are shown now so all these fields so it means actually nothing else than depending on what you add in here display fields uh, you should so if I would say here for example do not display I would not see the financial dimension so for example all these kind of things won't be there for example good um, I can connect it directly to a project if there would be projects available I could put it directly to a vendor or to a customer and so on actually good new expense line means nothing else than I have here my hotel and my hotel so I have hotel costs I click on OK I can say well the transaction date should be Monday no, not in future let's say I was last Monday I was there and just to say here as well uh, those fields that are shown in here are also possible to modify so it's just here the transaction fields so currently there is quite a lot of information available um, which is not really needed maybe so you can also say here just do not display as an example good so this means nothing else receipt number uh one two three four five 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 um cc i have here my payment methods just those which i said are allowed and as a default value it is the credit card so it was 500 500 euros hotel bill issued to company that's right because it is over the credit card the taxes as you can see is as soon as i i choose here c h e i guess and if i click on okay and yeah perfect okay so due to the setup that uh, we did in the tax stuff here so tax configurations due to that he automatically took the correct sales tax group which means in the end nothing else than in display fields uh, it would actually make sense to take it out because um, yeah so just somewhere should it some uh, sales tax group so actually it would make sense to not display it because the employee uh, yeah the employee itself um, doesn't know anything about sales tax group so it is it should be basically just mapped to the country so we don't need to think about it in the end item sales tax groups also perfect that's fine tax included in this amount is great financial dimensions I am hope I hope that I can post without any of those I have I actually don't know it number of nights and so on uh, yeah all these kind of fields which you can remove if you don't uh, need it save a new good so this means I can say now okay I had also a meal I click on okay and if everything is working fine if I would say in here if I would say in here for example cash that's fine uh, it was 99,000 euros because Switzerland is really expensive uh, if I would um, say CHE and yeah as you can see now you don't see the, the the sales tax group anymore because i took it out before so it is working perfectly great so this means now if i would say save a new i should get an error mm, i don't get an error um cancel save and close before you can submit this expense report and um, that are itemized or split must equal to the original transaction amount uh, mm -hmm. so this one needs to be itemized what the hell is itemized um, itemized category okay category expense category ah okay so this means I can say uh, okay I can split it okay of course because of the subcategory okay because of the subcategories I need to split it now so um yeah so just to quickly show you this 
Um, we had here the shared, no, not shared categories, but the expense category uh, hotel. And as you can remember, we have here these kind of uh, subcategories and it is itemized. So itemization is mandatory. So I need to say, well, okay, this is the category, which subcategory was it actually? So this means nothing else than I need to. That's cool, actually. That's really cool. Uh, so this means nothing else than, um, yeah, I had kind of daily room rate, transaction date, of course, also the this one here. And out to 500, this was 400. Um, I add a second one and I had also in here 100 um, and remaining zero. Uh, that's fine. Save and close. Itemization has been completed. Looks actually great. Looks actually great. Uh, the only thing that I'm kind of wondering is why I don't get here this thing I said at the time of the saving. But anyhow, we will see it what happens now. So I just say, okay, I do want to submit it. Hello, I've uh, finished my monthly expense expenses and submit. Good. Uh, it is submitted. Uh, so I think something with the policies didn't work. Um, just one second. So I said online safe, eval evaluate travel and expense policies. Oh, and let's go to policies. Yeah, yeah. it is active. Hmm. Cotoso Entertainment Germany for policy rules for meals bigger than 200 euros tested so I evaluate it the condition is true Effective date from 5 a.m. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, uh, let's let's move on. So this means uh, now I should have in here. Hopefully, perfect. I have in here um, the expense report from myself, and if everything is working fine, then it is now in the workflow. So at some point. At some point, I should be able to approve it because currently, mm -hmm, because it is in the workflow at the moment. So F5, 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 and in a minute or two, I should be able to, I should be able to approve it. Let's quickly have a look at it if this is already went through so it should be this one here site shop history last time was oh, okay this is the system time 0359 so every minute so yeah let's go back to have a look at it if it is now Good, still not. Have I chosen to let's see if I've chosen the correct one or not in the workflow? So expense report and edit and approve expense report and please approve and the assignments is to user admin user. Is there also admin? Mm -hmm. It should be me. Yeah, so it should work actually. 
So therefore I think it is really just in in the workflow still. So this means let's go back and let's have a look again and still not. So I just quickly wait a little bit and just make a short break then and if there would be a problem I would just also check it quickly. So okay, um, the problem was actually the workflow. Uh, so in the end it means nothing else than if I go here to the area page and then workflow history and if I have a look in here then we actually see that it is kind of stuck in the um, auto posting uh, workflow. So uh, yeah this means in the end nothing else than uh, it would make sense so I actually cannot do anything in here anymore. Um, I also don't know why but uh, in the end we just need to take it out actually so you in the end you don't need to have this um, expense report auto posting if someone of you of you would know for what it is then yeah please tell me <laughs> add a kind of command uh, I just take it out so I just made it inactive and which means nothing else than AX is then automatically going to do the normal uh, expense report approval so this means nothing else than if I go back into the employee self-service and if I create here a new one um, my second expense re report blah 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 and if I add here a new line and once again hotel uh, transaction date the ninth Receipt number, transaction amount 500, paid by the company, taxes, country, region, Switzerland, tax included, and save and new, a new category, um, meal, and OK, transaction date as well, the ninth, cash. 90,000, no, 977 uh, taxes again in Switzerland and save and close. And now I need to do the itemization again for those which have subcategories. So I say in here just that it is the daily room rate 400 and add and hotel telephone and the ninth by the way you can also put the the whole posting uh, based on the subcategory in the end so yeah uh, just that you know that good itemization has been completed and i can click here on submit and submit good and now it should be available in here all expense reports absolutely good and now as you can see here so um, it is at the moment still in the workflow but he started the workflow expense report compared to this one where he started the expense report auto posting so it's just the different workflow which was started so this means nothing else than now it is in the workflow engine and we need to wait until the workflow engine uh, did his things so just one minute because uh, it is always running each minute so by clicking f5 it's always just kind of stupid if for such kind of a thing that you always need to for such kind of video because you need to wait until the report uh, until the workflow uh, is went through but normally um yeah normally you're not doing it step by step so yeah just Ah, perfect now he please approve so I can say well okay yes it is approved and okay and again uh, even the approval at the moment is now again on the workflow engine so I need to wait again until um, the workflow um, put back well yeah it is now approved so then he is going to change here the status from in review to approved of course you could of course you could also um, so kind of wait and then somewhere it should be it should end up here in the end but yeah as I said so I just need to wait one minute until until the workflow engine um, went through it so yeah 
by the way, just to show you, you can also go in here and kind of edit some things, um, but also as well, just if you um, allow it. So in the end, for example, in the parameters itself, um, there is, for example, here the possibility to uh, make the that you, that allow that allows you to correct the the date, for example. If not, then you also don't have that many possibilities. Good, perfect. Now, as you can see, the workflow engine went through and it is now approved. Uh, you can print it out, of course, and you get the expense report. Um, in the end, you just need to post it. So if you click here on post the select ones, then AX posted it. Good. So uh, this means now nothing else than AX created a voucher. So um, this voucher is actually nothing else than, in my case, the vendor posting would be the one. So because based on the payment method, which was here cash, he, po he should have posted the meal cost on my vendor and the credit card should actually be posted directly onto the bank account. But let's see. So we can go to the general ledger and to the voucher transactions and let's search for this voucher. And if I click here on OK, then as you can see, he posted onto my vendor the 977 for the meal against the cost account. So on debit side cost account, employee meals. And he posted the bank transaction, so 500 on credit side of the bank, against the hot hotel expenses. Uh, if it is a credit card, of course, it would make actually sense not to post it directly onto the bank, or maybe maybe going over a bridging account would make would make more sense in the end. But um, well, the whole postings are now actually done. So I have on my vendor account, so on myself here, I have the transactions so so this one was just from before so here the 977 which means in the end nothing else than i can do a normal kind of payment run of it so this means it's a normal it's now a normal vendor invoice so this means as soon as if i go here into payment journal and lines and if i would run here a payment proposal for example uh we're wrong payment proposal, create payment proposal, and uh, just take all of them and OK. Is empty. Per due date, everything that should be. Uh, Two thousand six. Anyhow, can be can be somehow it is changing my date always. Maybe this version is not any more active. But uh, of course, as you can see, you can just do the normal the normal process of paying kind of an invoice. So when you mark it, then you would have here automatically the whole things, and you can say I'm going to pay it over my bank account. Of course, it is also working over payment proposal in the end. Uh, it is really just because somehow somehow this version I need to reactivate it again. Good. So, um, yeah, um, this was now quite um, the simple, the simple version of how to set up um, the travel and expenses. Of course, there are quite more possibilities like um, import of credit card informations and credit card um, things in the end. But as I said, uh, those videos are always just the kind of the basic setups and all the rest you can just um, <clears throat> test it on your own and if you have any kind of inputs any kind of things that i don't know please just add any kind of comments to this video on youtube and then um yeah we can hopefully have um, a good discussion of it good so i wish you a nice day and all the best <laughs> bye